privacy. That's iPhone, or so says Apple. In reality, major corporations, data brokers, and even local governments buy and sell personal information about you every day, all while claiming to protect your privacy. Eventually, we'll look back on the time period we're living in now and wonder how we ever let it get to the point where we didn't have a right to know what information companies were collecting about us, what they were doing with it, and who they were selling it to. It's not a conspiracy. It's a $300 billion industry as of last year, which means it's worth about $1,000 for every person in the United States. As we dive into the settings you need to change to protect your privacy, I bet you'll be amazed by just how important a single switch in the settings app can be. And that's where we'll start. I'll tap to open the settings app on my phone, scroll down to privacy and security, tap on that to open it up. Then I'll tap on location services, and let's open up this share my location menu. Under family, make sure that you recognize all the people in this list and that they're actually part of your family. Second, make sure you're not sharing your location with family members who don't need to know your location all the time. Because if their phone gets stolen, you don't want the thief to have a tracker app for you. I always try to share as little sensitive information as possible with the people I love. It's not because I don't trust them, it's because I never want to put them in a position where it's their fault if I get hacked. In my case, I don't need dear old Aunt Digi Payette, who works for the IRS, to know where I am all the time. So I'll tap on her name and scroll down to the bottom and just tap stop sharing my location and then stop sharing. Let's head back to the main page of location services settings. Scroll through your list of apps and watch out for the word always. When an app is set to always, that app always has access to your location, even when you're not using it. It's essentially a tracker. In my list, let's open up the American Airlines app. True story, the airline industry just sold 5 billion passenger records to the federal government through a company called the Airlines Reporting Corporation, which is co-owned by all the major US carriers. Why should law enforcement bother getting pesky search warrants when they can just look up anyone's flight history with a subscription that costs only a few hundred thousand dollars a year. The next really important setting, which is even more dangerous than always, is the precise location switch, which Apple gave us back in September 2020 with iOS 14. Let me show you just how important this switch is using Google Maps. I have two phones here, one with Google Maps with precise location turned on and another with precise location turned off. With precise location on, you see the familiar blue dot. If you zoom way, way, way in, you'll notice that the blue dot actually has a small blue circle around it. This is about as precise as precise location gets. Google Maps knows you're within about a 10 foot circle. Now I'll open Google Maps on my phone with precise location turned off. We still have a blue dot, but if I zoom way out, we're gonna see that the circle is actually pretty huge and the center of the blue dot is in the wrong place. All Google Maps knows is that I'm somewhere within this kilometer sized circle. It's not very precise. And here's the truth. Companies hide behind the concept of anonymizing your data. When you use your phone, it's not your name or email address associated with the data. It's an anonymous device identifier. So they're not collecting data about you specifically, they're collecting data about a device that's supposedly not linked to you. However, if they're getting precise location data, it becomes insanely easy to identify you specifically. MIT researchers found that with just four random location points, they could uniquely identify 95% of people from a data set of 1.5 million users. So anonymized data is meaningless if precise location is turned on. If it's off, then you're anonymous within a giant circle. So unless you're living with the bears in Northern Alaska, a data broker is gonna have a tough time figuring out exactly who you are. Back again to the main page of location services settings. I highly recommend going through and changing every app from always to well using the app or never. And if you wanna be extra safe, turn off the precise location switch for pretty much every app except for GPS apps that need to know exactly where you are. Next, let's go back to the main page of location services settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and tap to open up the system services menu. Buckle up because we're about to burn through these system settings. It's ridiculous how vague Apple makes these. Here we go. 
Alerts and shortcuts automations, this is for location-based reminders and shortcuts triggers. If you don't use those, turn it off. Apple Pay Merchant Identification. If you have the physical Apple Card, it just makes merchant names look prettier in your transaction history, turn it off. Cell Network Search, surprise, this does nothing for your phone's connectivity. Apple just wants you to help them build their cell phone tower database. Turn it off. Compass calibration, leave it on if you use Maps apps. Device management, if this is a personal phone and not a work phone, turn it off. Emergency calls and SOS, keep it on. It could save your life. Find my iPhone, keep it on unless you want to lose your phone forever. Home or home kit, as it used to be called, you only need this if you have smart home stuff that turns on when you get home. I don't, gonna turn it off. In-app web browsing, this allows websites inside of apps to track your location, I'm gonna turn it off. Motion calibration and distance, keep it on if you use fitness apps and care about accurate step counting. I turn it off. Networking and wireless is too complicated to explain really quickly, leave it on. Satellite connection, keep it on for emergencies. Setting time zone, turn it off to save battery life and just flip the switch on and back off again if you change time zones to set the clock on your phone. Share my location, leave that on if you use the feature. Sharing.framework, this manages location suggestions when you share things with other people, you can turn it off safely. Suggestions and search, turn that one off. This one's bad, Apple gets your precise location every time you search for anything, ugh. System customization, leave that one on. It's actually privacy friendly and everything stays on your device. Wi-Fi calling has to do with short code phone numbers that are location specific. Like if you dial 311 in New York City, you're gonna get a different information line than if you're in Boston, for instance. If this isn't turned on, your phone doesn't know which information line to call just for those short code numbers that are not emergency numbers because emergencies, they just override all the stuff anyway and all your location data gets sent. So. You can turn this off safely. And the worst one of all is significant locations and routes. I'll tap to open that up. This tracks everywhere you go all the time to build a complete profile of your life. What is it actually used for? Well, according to Apple, it helps things like improve travel time estimates and calendar. And it lets Apple Maps suggest restaurants that might be on your way home from work. But if Apple wants me to leave on a feature, they need to tell me exactly what it's doing, not be super vague like all this. My recommendation, is to turn it off and then tap turn off again. The other reason to turn this off is that you're gonna save a lot of battery life because your phone isn't pinging GPS everywhere you go. Let's tap back to the main page of system services and then scroll down to product improvement. And we're gonna turn off all the switches here. Let's let Apple improve their own gosh darn products. And at the very bottom, turn on status bar icon. Even when this switch is off, you'll still see the location services arrow at the top of your iPhone when any of your apps uses GPS. When this switch is on, you'll also see that arrow when any of the system services that we just talked about uses your location. It's a way to make your iPhone be honest with you and show you that icon every time it's tracking your location and draining your battery. Next, let's head back to the main page of privacy and security settings. I'll just tap back and back again. And right under location services, we have tracking. Let's tap to open that up. Turning off the switch next to allow apps to request to track is kind of a no brainer unless you want to allow apps to track you across other apps and websites. So I'll just tap to turn this switch off and then tap ask apps to stop tracking and all the other switches get turned off too. We have quite a few more settings to discuss, but nothing I can say today is gonna address the other big problem that we all have. What to do about all the data companies have been collecting about us for years and years. Fortunately, there is something you can do about it, and that's where Incogni comes into play. Because there is no master delete my data from all the data brokers switch anywhere on the internet. Your data gets shared over and over again, sold from one data broker to another, and suddenly your data is everywhere. Why does all this happen? Well, very few people in power are really incentivized to fix this problem. They talk a good game about privacy, but everybody's got their hand in the pot. Incogni removes your information from lots of different data brokers, hundreds of them. You sign up once, enter your information, and they handle the removal process. You can get 60% off an Incogni plan using promo code payette, or visit incogni.com slash payette, or just click one of the links in the description section below or in the pinned comment. Next, let's head back to the main page of privacy and security settings. We'll scroll down 
and tap to open up Contacts. These are the apps that have access to all of the contacts on your phone. With your permission, which you gave them, any of the apps you see with full access can upload a copy of your address book to their servers. Choosing limited access, just tap on one of the apps and tap limited access, and then just tap the checkbox here, and then the back arrow is almost always a better choice. And you might wanna do this for all the apps in this list. Next, I'll tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down to another really important one, photos. Tap to open that up. Your iPhone gives you a preview of eight photos out of the thousands of photos and videos that are shared with every app in this list with full access to your photo library. You probably don't want apps having access to every photo and video on your iPhone. This is where TikTok got in trouble because in addition to just being an app where you can watch videos, it's a video editing app that people use to, among other things, add filters and censor inappropriate content. Well, until recently, as soon as you started to edit a video on your iPhone, that entire video was instantly pre-uploaded to TikTok servers in China. Regardless of whether you chose to save it on your phone or post it on their platform, they help themselves to your videos. Then BuzzFeed's TikTok tapes investigation in June 2022 revealed leaked audio from over 80 internal meetings where it became crystal clear that Chinese engineers had access to US user data. There was a Beijing-based engineer they called the, quote, master admin, who had access to everything. One employee literally said, quote, everything is seen in China, it gets worse. Yin Tao Yu, who was TikTok's US head of engineering from 2017 to 2018, came out in 2023 and said in court filings that the Chinese Communist Party had a, quote, God credential, basically a backdoor super user credential that bypassed all the privacy protections that Americans might have thought they had. They used it to track Hong Kong pro-democracy protesters in 2018 and God knows what else. They could see device IDs, IP addresses, names, messages, browsing history, everything. And due to pre-uploading, the Chinese government had gazillions of videos that American citizens had tried to censor or edit, even if that person never intended to share or save it. None of us know the whole story of the TikTok saga, but it stands to reason that people were getting blackmailed. And that's why TikTok suddenly became a national security issue. Long story short, be careful about which apps have access to your photos. Let's go back to the main page of privacy and security settings. Scroll down and tap on analytics and improvements. Suffice to say, it's not necessary for you to be sending information about how you use your phone to Apple or third-party app developers. This is another setting that is way too vague for me. I turn all these switches off. So I'll tap at the top and just keep turning the switches off. Next, tap back to the main privacy and security page of settings. And right underneath analytics and improvements, we have Apple advertising. Let's tap to open that up. And we're gonna turn off the switch next to personalized ads. This doesn't mean you'll see fewer ads. It means that the ads you'll see will be relevant to the content you're looking at. Meaning if you're on Disney's website, you'll see ads maybe for other vacation spots, but not for the pair of underwear you looked at two weeks ago on some other website. Back to the main page of settings. I'll tap back and let's tap to open up app privacy report and turn this on if it isn't already for you. At some point, I might do a video about how to make sense of all this data. And it is safe to have the switch on because this data never leaves your device. And if you wanna know when that video comes out, tap the subscribe button and hit that notifications bell. I really appreciate it. Next, let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and tap to open up Apple Intelligence Report. Same deal as the last setting. When we come back in a future video to dive deep into this, it'll be interesting to have the data to look at and it never leaves your device. Let's step back to the main page of privacy settings and down here at the bottom is wired accessories. Tap to open that up. I can't change it on my phone because this phone is running a beta, but on your phone, change it to ask for new accessories. This prevents juice jacking. When you plug your iPhone into a public charger that could potentially hack your phone. Next, let's tap back to the main page of privacy settings and tap to open up stolen device protection. With stolen device protection off, if somebody steals your phone and they know your passcode, they could change your Apple ID password and permanently lock you out of your iCloud account and your iPhone. Stolen device protection puts an hour long delay on making any big changes to your Apple account, which gives you enough time to go to iCloud.com find and lock everything down. 
You could choose to require security delay when you're away from familiar locations or always. If there are people coming in and out of your home that you don't trust 100%, you might want to set it to always. If you haven't watched my last video about iOS 26, you should check it out. I'm looking forward to making the turn on video that I promised last time around, but unfortunately, I got super sick after I put out the last video, so I wasn't able to record it. My body waited until iOS 26 came out to get bronchitis. I'm feeling a little better now, but you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm not the guy to be alarmist or believe in conspiracies, but if I can say this actually happened and here's the proof, that's the kind of information I feel comfortable passing along to you. It's not about me telling you what to think or who to trust. It's about giving you information so you can decide what to think and who to trust. Hopefully you trust me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you here.